Thank you for joining us today. Um, this is Breakout Room Showcase C, Navigating the AI Wave, Empowering Higher Education Through Generative AI. Um, our, our presenters introduce themselves in a minute, um, but I'm just gonna ask before we get started, just a reminder, we do have quite a few people in the session, so we ask that you stay on mute. Um, please use the chat for questions or comments. Um, we will reserve the last five minutes of the showcase to answer your questions. Um, I will be um, keeping time for our presenters, so I'll give you guys a five minute warning when you have about five minutes left for your presentation time and then we'll go into Q&A. Um, and I'm here if you need anything and I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to the team. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much. So I will be running the presentation. My name is Julia Gofredi. I'm the Emerging Learning Technology Lead at the University of Baltimore, and I'll let my team members introduce themselves. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amr Kadri. I am the Coordinator of Tutoring and Coaching Services at the University of Baltimore. I am also an adjunct faculty member there teaching business statistics for the graduate and undergraduate level. Hi, everyone. I am Dr. Jessica Stansberry, and I am the Director for Teaching and Learning Excellence with our Center for Excellence for Learning, Teaching, and Technology. Very excited to be here. Hi, all. My name is Sarah Lausch. I am an Education Development Specialist at Boise State University, but I had the pleasure to work with all of these great folks at the University of Baltimore previously. So, uh, yeah, that's why I'm still here. All right, let's take it away. So ChatGBT came out at the scale that we have in now around November 2022, November 30th to be specific. So right around that time, as you can see from some of the snippets we have on the screen, the national conversation was confused to say the least. Uh, people were calling for banning the tool. Um, what is going to happen to our educational or higher educational system? Also at the K-12 level, but we're focusing on higher ed today. And some people were seeing uh, the great opportunity that these tools uh, could bring. But what we noticed is that there are stances on the extremes, either extreme support or extremely against, uh, and not much in between. And the same uh, scale at the University of Baltimore, uh, me being, being the tutoring guy and self helping faculty, we would receive communications uh, such as, how do I cite this tool? Um, how can I prevent my students from cheating? How can I incorporate this tool into uh, the, my classroom? And, and similar questions like that. So we were thinking, how can we bring the conversation back to the UBALT community and start a discourse among students and faculty to be more specific uh, to discuss this tool and start cultivating a shared understanding of how we're, we're going to use the tool at UBALT and how what our stance is going to be on. Next slide, please. All right, so the research questions that we were interested in, first one is for faculty, second is for students, and the third is a shared one. Uh, how do faculty members view AI role in teaching and learning? How does this influence their willingness to incorporate AI tools in their teaching? What are students' perspectives on AI's impact on their learning experiences, including benefits, challenges, and ethical considerations? Again, a 360 view, not a rosy one or a thorny one in between. And finally, how can educational tools that inform uh, faculty and students about AI influence perceptions, attitudes, and classroom engagement, potentially shifting the conversation from apprehension to curiosity? Next slide, please. So, thank you, Amr. At the University of Baltimore, we are actually part of a larger initiative with Ithaca SNR, which is a two-year research initiative called Making AI Generative for Higher Education. And we are partnering in that process with 20 uh, top-tier national and international institutions to assess the landscape in higher ed and figure out how to move it forward through a data-informed approach. So as part of that and part of um, the Elkins Scholarship Fellowship that Amr uh, received to do this work, we kind of joint combined some of those projects. And our initial research was to assess the landscape at the University of Baltimore. 
So we created a survey and we uh, surveyed faculty, staff, and students. We did this in fall of 23. And then we released a white paper on its findings, which uh, Julia is going to post in the link so that you can have, when you have time, can read it, have a more detailed view since we don't have a lot of time here today. Some of the interesting findings that we found from this was that despite the media hype, um, faculty were actually more aware of ChatGPT than our students were aware of ChatGPT. I also want to give some context for those who are not familiar with the University of Baltimore in that we are uh, designated as a primarily Black institution, as well as um, a minority serving institution. Our student population average age is around 31. Um, they are working adults, um, similar to a community college population as a as a comparison. So they students, however, were more aware of other tools such as Grammarly. The perceptions of AI from what we glean from our data is that it could be connected to how faculty view the acquisition of knowledge. So whether they view the knowledge as gatekeepers, you know, where we are professors of that knowledge, or if they view it as facilitators of knowledge. And that seems to kind of uh, sway their perception of AI. And then lastly, um, of, of one of the highlights is that students do see the value in AI. They want to use it as a learning tool to help them, but they also understand that it has to be used responsibly and ethically. Um, so despite, you know, the, the fear and uncertainty of cheating, um, we didn't really find that in our in our research at this time. And again, uh, thank you, Jessica, as you mentioned, shout out to the William A. Kerwin Center for Academic Innovation for uh, supporting and funding this research as this was part of, we were part of the first cohort of the Elkins Sodal Fellowship under Dr. Uh, Kelly Elkins. Thank you again. Um, the way we designed the study is by coming up with two asynchronous self-paced five-week uh, Canvas courses, one for faculty and one for students. Uh, Julia will tell us more details in a second about the uh, different modules or the different the five modules for each course and what those are. Uh, we you use surveys, so pre the course and post the course, there were two large surveys, and also pre and post each of the five modules, participants were asked uh, to complete a survey. There was a lot of uh, hands-on work and less luxury text-based things, so we had them actually go on the tool. And when I say the tool, I mean ChatGPT, uh, Bing AI, which is uh, now known as Microsoft Copilot, and Google Bard, which is now known as uh, Gemini. So we had them do activities that are most, mostly academic based, but also some other fun life personal activities as well. Of course, uh, we ensured uh, anonymity and informed consent. And, and uh, again, since the current center sponsored this research, we were able to offer some incentives uh, based on random drawings. So for students, uh, we gave them tablets and for faculty, uh, iPhone Wi-Fi projectors, which I didn't even know existed, and our faculty were very happy uh, to receive those or the ones that did. Next awesome. Slide, Thank Julia. you for that intro, Amr. So just to briefly go over our modules, both of the courses had five modules, but we adjusted based on, you know, what would be important for our students to learn versus what our faculty would learn. You can see them on the screen. Um, we had a little bit more um, long form materials for our faculty to reference, um, you know, more uh, case studies, longer uh, reports, longer podcasts, longer webinars um, that they would be uh, accustomed to uh, learning from, as well as some hands-on activities. You can see with the little uh, side on the right that we had a little bit more smaller ends than we were hoping for, but we did have some faculty interest. Um, just being able to complete the course within the frame of our study proved to be a bit more challenging for most of our faculty members, but we still had a lot of engagement of when is this going to be available publicly or can I have access to this again? So we had a lot of interest and excitement, but the time commitment was a little difficult when it came to having our ends. Uh, with the students, we can see a similar sort of pattern there. Uh, in terms of their modules, uh, again, it kind of is more adjusted to the actual student experience. We blended a little bit more 
of reflection and making connections to their future career paths. As Jessica was mentioning, being um, with our population we have at UBALT, we really are committed to our knowledge that works mindset. So making sure that students are seeing how this tool applies to their career paths and really making those connections and also having the opportunity to practice in a meaningful way. So we had a couple of standout activities um, for both faculty and students. This is where we notice in some of our qualitative reflections throughout the course, whether they were completing the activity or adding comments to our surveys pre and post the module. We had some reflections about saying, you know, I hadn't thought about AI in this way, or I didn't realize this was something I could do. And this really helped me better understand how to navigate this tool. One of our favorites for the students was the help me with dinner. Um, this was a really clever activity that Amr came up with, and it ha that was a really pivotal point from looking at um, their engagement with the course in Canvas, saying, wow, I had I had not even considered this at all, making it a little bit less of an intimidating tool and seeing a little bit more, okay, there are ways that I can engage with this. There are ways that are um, harmless, that are maybe fun, and how do I transfer that kind of skill set of learning from this tool in a routine, average life sort of way and bring it into the academic? So on the research side, I'm going to go through the research um, a little quickly so that we have time for questions. But you do have a copy of the white paper that addresses some of this. Um, we assessed knowledge pre and post, we assessed attitude change pre and post, and then we also assessed the perceived usefulness of the modules. And we did this through quantitative questions and qualitative questions so that we could better modify the course since this was just for a research pilot um, with plans to release the course on a larger scale in the future. So, th you know, these were some of our focused questions. Next slide. So what did we find for our students? So we did find, um, I am just highlighting our significant findings. So due to our small ends that we had for students, we did use a non-parametric test, um, our Wilcox and Sign Rank test. And we did find significant findings uh, for knowledge increase in the student module. So our first module was introduction to AI. So they learned more in that. The confidence in their ability to integrate uh, AI into their assignments, we saw significant change in their confidence in being able to do that. So module three for students was tutoring and learning. So how to use AI as a learning and tutoring tool. And then also their belief in whether or not AI can enhance their learning process from the same module, we saw changes. Um, confident in identifying AI for errors. So their ability in module four which had to do with limitations in AI. You know, we wanted to be transparent with the students and the limitations of AI and their confidence increased in being able to spot AI generated errors, which kind of gets into some of that data literacy and identifying biases. And then their confidence in understanding the impact of AI, we saw significant changes, which was that reflection and, and hands-on module five for the students. Next slide. So for faculty, um, we found one significant finding, and that was their knowledge about the ethical considerations related to AI. And that increased pre and post from their participation in module two, which was just the focused on ethics and responsible use of AI. Next slide. So for the perceived usefulness of modules, we did not do a pre, so this is just post data, but you can see the means. So it was a five point Likert scale, higher numbers indicating greater perceived usefulness. And all of the modules were perceived, you know, above a three, um, which is great in my mind for faculty and students, um, which showed us that we were on the right track. Um, and that was good. I'm going to turn this over to Zara. All right. So the qualitative findings um, have not all been evaluated yet. That is my summer project. We all have those, I bet. Um, but here are some preliminary findings that we found. It's complicated. Um, for both students and faculty, we were able to take some of the um, initial um, worries away with more education, just educating about the um, 
about the tool, about the tools, how, they, how students and faculty can use them. Um, this actually shows um, before the course what students and faculty used AI for the most. Um, pretty, yeah, pretty diverse personal use um, work, just trying to brainstorm. Um, yeah, next slide, please. We're running out of time. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right. So in terms of faculty and student perspectives, perspectives on the advantage and challenges of AI um, before they started the course, there was a lot of like dichotomous findings. Um, some like faculty, of course, feared about academic integrity, loss of writing skills, loss of learning motivation. Um, students also had a lot of reluctancies and worries. They were worried about their peers cheating and them trying to do the best that they can and not getting the, um, not um, achieving the, uh, yeah, the grade that they should be getting. Um, and it was seen as more of a distraction than actually a tool versus AI can also be a great learning tool and help with growth of critical thinking and um, just having a driver for positive change in higher education, which I thought was really great of a student to say is that, oh, well, now my instructors have to be more um, creative again in terms of their teaching because they have a new threat. And I was like, oh, that's such a good way of looking at this, right? We need to be innovative in education um, because of this now. Next slide, please. Um, here are some of the quotes um, that I thought were impactful here. Again, it's complicated. After the course, faculty felt more um, equipped to use AI, um, but also some of the initial reactions um, at worries and just like thinking that, oh, I don't know how this is going to work and my course still remained. Um, it's exciting and scary at the same time. Um, students were a little bit more excited about it. Um, they, I think, got some really good practical um, practical chances to like try out AI in different ways during the course. Um, and uh, I thought the second quote of the students was really great. Like, I think hanging out with an AI friend is sad. Like there is some of the, I know we have a national crisis of students um, being more and more lonely and their mental health is declining. So we even saw that in our, um, in our results as well. So students are aware, some students at least, of uh, the issues with AI, but they're also excited at the same time. So yeah, more results forthcoming. Thank you so much, Zara. So I'm gonna go pretty quickly because we're over our time. Uh, next step is turning that five week course into five independent modules and opening it up to the entire UBALT campus starting this summer. And that also includes our staff members as well. Um, and if faculty and students continue to want more, so although we might have we might have had a low end or sample sizes, uh, we did get a lot of communications and emails and people running into us uh, asking about the course and wanting to participate and that they didn't have time to complete it throughout the semester, but they want more access to it and continue in this uh, conversation. In our respective centers, whether it's the tutoring center or CELT, uh, we are continuing to build relationships and continuing to offer uh, more of these uh, courses and information. For example, uh, we are going to be uh, offering a showcase in the summer to talk about AI for our faculty members and show how it is being used uh, in a community and in individual uh, careers and practices. And we even now have a new master's program in the business school uh, focused on AI, artificial intelligence, for business. Next slide, please. So I um, just want to know, we only have about one minute left for questions. So I know um, the team has been answering some of the questions in the chat as we go. Um, but I do just want to want to give people, you know, th that last minute if we can. Okay. Uh, Any, uh, I think we're good here, right, Jessica? Yeah, yeah. You can just leave this up for the next slide. Great. People have questions, they can always contact us too. We're happy to talk. Um, does anyone have any questions now, aside from the ones that we've been responding to in the chat? 
So the, the summer training, we are actually doing an AI summit, which is a three-day summit, and it will bring in community partners and industry leaders who will share with us how it's impacting the their careers so that we can do knowledge that works and build AI literacy that's important and makes sense for our students. On that second day of the summit, we do plan to open that up so that people can watch virtually for that summit. And we're still ironing out those details, but when we do, we can be happy to pass them along uh, to the Kerman Center if they- Yes, you know, we'd love to do that. Information to everyone. Yes, we would love to send that out to folks. Please do make sure we know when that's, when that's open. Okay. Great, um, well, we are at time. So um, thank you all very much. <clears throat> this work is really exciting. Um, and we know it's just the beginning and the tip of the iceberg. So um, thank you for presenting. Um, we, our breakout rooms are not gonna close in between. Um, we do have a 10 minute um, transition break time now. Um, <clears throat> you can leave the room, go to the main room and select another breakout, or you can navigate directly to the next session that you wish to hear um, by going to um, your menu where it says more, choosing breakout rooms and choosing A, B, C, or D. Thank you guys.